Oh guys, this is Angry Roleplayer here, and due to popular demand, I'm gonna do an in-depth Jade Harvester build for the current live patch 2.4.1 and for the PTR and uh, the future patch 2.4.2. So let's start with the gear and then go on and on and on to skills and everything else. So the gear is pretty much the standard jade six piece. Uh, the helm is within tweet and critical hit chance. The shoulder should have in tweet CDR and hound damage, of course. The gloves, I prefer in tweet critical hit damage and critical hit chance. The chest in tweet and hound damage on and all the secondaries that you may get. The pants are integrated in armor. Armor is more important for the intelligence based um, characters like the wizard and uh, the witch doctor because we have a lot of all rest from the intelligence and we need armor more than all rest. And uh, the boots are integrated all rest and armor. This is the perfect role, but without the secondaries, but still, it's a perfect role that you may get. Also, the analyst walk set with the amulet and the ring, the compass rose, and the traveler's pledge. On the traveler's pledge, you may need to have the poison damage roll here. But if you don't have the poison rolled traveler's pledge, this is the good one with intelligence, critical hit damage, and critical hit chance. And the compass rose, uh, it's the ring rolls with five stats. So it's a good spot to have CDR as well. So ideal ideal ring would be like intelligence, critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and CDR. But this one is also decent. It has more. It has wit instead of critical hit chance, and it's pretty decent as well. It gives me more toughness. Uh, for the weapon, we have sacred harvester here. Uh, you should also have a ten percent CDR uh, potentially. This is the best roll that you need. Sacred harvester has, of course, for damage reduction along with the Lacumba's ornament. Well, the poison skill damage roll here and uh, int weight and critical hit chance as well. Also, as the ring, we have conventional elements here. Uh, use the ring of emptiness here if your ring of emptiness is extremely like insane. But I have a good conventional of elements here with high uh, secondary and uh, it's ancient and it's crazy high roll, so I use this. And as the mojo, we have Henry's perquisition here, and I explain why we have Henry's here. It's also an ancient, uh, and you need in vid, uh, critical hit chance, and the hound damage here. I would say avoid uh, doing CDR here because losing a thousand wit is not good for Jade, it's pretty much. It's not a super tough set and has no built in damage reduction here, so we need all damage reduction that you can get, all wit, all toughness that you can get from all these. Uh, Slots. I don't, I don't even have CDR here. If I put my uh, CDR gloves here, my toughness drops by 10 million. That's a lot for the Jade. As for the gems, we have the esoteric alteration just because there is not really a high damage reduction for this, uh, for this uh, set. Uh, and we need all toughness as possible. Unfortunately, we have to use esoteric alteration as a gem. Is a huge, huge damage reduction boost without it. It's like running without the pants in uh, naked in uh, Greater Rift. And the second gem is, of course, Bane of the Trapped. No questions here. And the third is uh, Bane of the Stricken, of course, as we spam Hound really fast, so it's pretty much ramps up quickly. So, we Bane of the Stricken is a good option here. The belt is uh, the Belt of Transcendence here. I'll explain why we have Belt of Transcendence here a little earlier as we go in the build. The gems, uh, the gems in the chest and the pants are the topazes, of course. And here I have the diamond in the helm. Why diamond? Because it gives more CDR. It's uh, uh, 12 and 5% CDR. 
here if we have it in hell and uh, in the gloves I will have only 8 CDR and uh, take a look what happens if I change to MTX here you see there's uh, 56 okay, uh, 56 million toughness see now it's 65 and it's 55 million so uh, if I put enemies in helm I have lower toughness with TDR here than that I had with the diamond here and with the diamond I also have uh, about 4% more CDR and CDR is fucking important more than anything else in this build so for the cube for the cube we have Wormwood here uh, which uh, automatically casts local swarm everywhere every couple of seconds it just spams local swarm on the screen and I don't have local swarm here on the skill bar I'll explain later why Quest Cottle is a must have wooden mask for uh, the Jade build it was like this ages ago and it's still super important basically increases huge huge uh, our DPS of the local swarm and hound and then we consume the dots and it's kind of instantly builds up and the ring is the ring bad emptiness this is the rock ring and on life it's now does a hundred percent damage and on PTR and I think that's I hope this will save uh, save in the future patch and save a future patch if it does 300% increased damage to enemies affected by both Hound and Local Swarm. As we have Local Swarm out of spreading, we just need to tag a mobs with Hound and uh, is, they, instantly, they instantly get 300% increased damage from everything. So this is it for the cube, uh, for the gems and for the gear. A little talk on, on the follower as well. I have uh, an Ian Dangdor, uh, it helps fight uh, the Rift Guardians, especially, especially on the last uh, you know, seconds of the fight when uh, Rift Guardians start spawning ads, they're casting uh, their damage, most damaging spells, their multiply or something like that. And it really helps stop the Rift Guardian and just, and just kill him in time. So. Uh, and I also have this ring. This is a, this is a legacy Oculus ring where you can roll attack speed twice, and you can roll something to attack speed, and they are summarized, and you get crazy attack speed. So if we run without the unity, and we run without the unity here, as you can see, this is standard soft core, soft core build. So. And XP helps there a lot and it's, it's another chance to create a bubble of small power but it still creates a bubble as well and it's raw, yeah, I can roll it to 15 attack speed and there's a second Oculus ring and that's the current generation Oculus ring it's uh, I also also roll it to attack speed and attack speed on the Esso Jochen here or Amulet which crowds the mobs as well so, but if you don't have this uh, this uh, legacy Oculus ring, you can use Weird Ward as well with uh, the Thunder Fury, which hits with lightning, and uh, Weird Ward has a chance to stun enemies with lightning damage. This is also really, really good, really good choice for your follower. Uh, it's pretty much the same. I just prefer this one as I have the legacy. Oculus ring here. Now for the skills guys, what's the selection of skills that we have here? The first is the Poison Spirit Hound, it's 20% more damage from all sources, also our main damage dealer and uh, we consume all these dots with our soul harvest in them. That's uh, the main skill that does damage um, for the whole jade. On the second button we have Hex Jinx. As we don't have local swarm, I prefer this skill a lot. Not only it does control uh, it does crowd control, it's just it's a huge deal 
to hex mobs into chickens and they also take 30% more damage while into chicken forms. That's extremely good at DPS buff. It's also used for ZDPS dock as well uh, before and it's a huge huge nice skill. Spirit Rook Severance I prefer speed here instead of duration here but you may also use Jout for the duration or actually I like healing journey a lot it's slow but you instantly recover life with that it. it's gonna it can save you some headache and save you from death as well Solheimer's language of course it's our damage reduction for our Lacumba's ornament and more stacks from the Sacred Harvester and everything in the armor and everything else and it's the nuke it's the super important main uh, skill for the jade. Everything works only because of this soul harvest. Piranados, Piranha as well to uh, get crowds to crowd mobs to gather them in a huge tight fucking pack and then destroy. Piranado is super important as well. It's a nice skill. Horrify, threaten an aspect. It's not super important, but as we run on really low toughness, uh, and especially in greater rift, it's just problematical to survive. We need to have all toughness that we can get, and this boost armor for 8 seconds, 15 additional armor. That's a really good defensive skill. For the passive confidence, retail is better than the pierced veil. Pierce the Veil uh, also increases our mana cost by 30%. That is not really good since we need to spam Hound like crazy to uh, reset our cooldowns uh, of Soul Harvest and we need to spam Hound. So with a higher cost it's not that good to spam. And Conference Ritual, uh, since we're always in melee range uh, and we deal 25 additional percent damage to enemies, uh, enemies that are close range and this is a huge global multiplier as well that's not an additional damage like this one so this is the best option for Jade absolutely Creeping Death is a must-have skill for ages for Jade it's nothing even to explain here always run with Creeping Death that's no exceptions here Spirit Vessel also must-have until something crazy things happen. Spirit Vessel is a must have for Jade, no exceptions, uh, should save you from death. Grave Injustice also super important skill for our Jade set. Uh, Jade, uh, Jade uh, Grave Injustice uh, just raises also our cooldowns and allows us to chain harvest mobs. Chain harvesting is extremely important, guys. I will explain you what it means. So don't don't also forget that we we are using convention of the elements. So what are the tactics for the jade? You know, in grid forty, uh, like two years ago, uh, jade worked like that. You attack uh, the monster with a hound or tornado, then you pressed spirit walk and uh, ran through the pack uh, and instantly destroyed like this now since the mobs have fucking millions and millions and trillions and billions of health uh, they don't just die instantly if you run through them so you have to be much closer to the packs and uh, you also have to be inside the packs to uh, chain kill mobs and chain uh, soul harvest them even further so this is this is like it also don't wait for the poison uh, damage uh, roll here uh, our main damage is the how that we can assume but you should not wait for this roll and just soul harvest when on poison you should soul harvest all the time on every rolls that doesn't matter it's just you, you can't wait for it but the important thing that when poison shows up here you should have your soul harvest ready so uh, that you can soul harvest mobs and then if uh, you 
if uh, some mobs will die you need to chain harvest again second time within the one roll of uh, the poison on conventional deadness that's very important that's a way to maximize your damage that's a way to maximize your damage so on the physical and on uh, fire and everything else you can just uh, harvest and uh, doesn't lose doesn't uh, no need to watch what you are doing uh, and everything like that but for poison you must be ready to harvest on the poison twice because uh, there is a huge uh, chance that moth will die and uh, it will reset the grave and justice will reset your soul harvest and you need to just bam 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 you need to stamp soul harvest here also don't forget to cast pound, a hound all the time on the mobs so it's like that don't even uh, don't even remove your finger from your left button it should be pressed all the time because so hound uh, just costs on 15 mana and you need to spam it continuously and then so harvest like that also don't forget to press hex on cooldown it's really important so that mobs won't really hit you and they will be always under crowd control also enchantress hexes them as well see she also hexes them into chickens as well and you uh, hex them into chickens that's a lot of crowd control uh, over the mobs so now the problem with the, with the great rifts and the higher the great rifts that climb is that once it has a lot of health and you potentially can get stuck inside the mobs. So another tactics here is not to run inside the packs like this, like this and howl inside and try to stay alive like I do a lot. But you can also hound nearby for example you tag the mobs with a hound you group them so and you run nearby them and just hound nearby don't run inside the pack that is really you think that is really dangerous just run nearby and hound nearby and it's like that no need to run inside if you feel it's too dangerous but if you feel that there's a lot of uh, small mobs that can die from one nuke, then you can run inside, uh, so harvest the mobs. Some of them will die, this will raise it. Grave injustice, and you can chain harvest again, chain harvest again, guys. So now to the options uh, that is co commonly used for this build across the internet. Um, so first of all many people prefer using the furnace here inside uh, instead of local swarm this is a decent option and I also used it a lot in the past but uh, if you have furnace here you need to manually cast local swarm you need to cast manually local swarm and uh, since there is not much options here, just the pestilence and uh, the cloud of instincts to get more reduced damage, uh, we select pestilence. And here are the problems start, guys. First of all, uh, local swarm only lasts for eight seconds. That means you must cast local swarm every eight seconds. And the second problem is that. Uh, one cast costs 300 mana and you have around uh, 900 mana so that's one two three and you're almost out of mana immediately and let's look at how the jade works the 4 piece set says has its cooldown reduced by one second every time you cast local hound or local swarm so if we cast local swarm like three times we can't really then spawn a uh, hound instantly because we run on low mana pretty fast you see and i'm out of mana immediately and i can't cast really and i really can't cast uh, 
a local swarm again, absolutely, because I need 300 mana. And, uh, and I need to cast it because I, it's only lasts for 8 seconds. And I absolutely need, so I need to run, regen my mana, then cast it again, then start spamming hound, then again, and something like that. And if you move to some density, for example, you, for example, I start from here. Let's wait for the full mana. I start from here. Uh, I cast Ochre Swarm, then I run to another screen, another Locker Swarm, another Locker Swarm. See, I'm already out of mana and I can't cast more Locker Swarms here. Unfortunately, the costs are too high, are too high. And not only that, you need to cast Local Swarm every 8 seconds and it also occupies slot uh, that we had our Hex here. But also, also, the problem is that we can't then Hounds, uh, we can't spam Hounds really fast then because we re there is really mana uh, issues there if you can have both Local Swarm and Hound at the same time. And you also need to remember that you need to cast a local swarm every eight seconds in. You know, in a fire battle, it's extremely easy to forget that uh, you need to recast local swarm as well. Because you know you're spamming hound everywhere, but local swarm you can just forget, or you cast it uh, like two times or three times, press on the button, and you're out of mana again, and you can can cast anything. So. Local Swarm here saves a lot of pain in the ass. A lot of pain. Uh, if we have uh, if we have Wormwood, we save us from a lot of trouble, from a lot of pain in the ass casting Local Swarm here, guys. So what about another options? Another options to use here is to use Howling Girl instead of Battle of Transcendence. You know why I have Battle Transcendence here? Uh, this is uh, because about a year ago when the Jade was buffed for the first time I realized that toughness is not uh, as high as I need uh, to survive in Great Reap about 70 and 80. So I was thinking uh, what are the options here and I came up with the idea to use Battle Transcendence here. And uh, to summon fetishes at the mid shields, and it's extremely, extremely good. That saves you from a lot of trouble, especially fighting Reef Guardians without uh, the ads or with the ads, where all these uh, monsters they're occupied by fetishes, and you really concentrate on the Reef Guardian when the Reef Guardian is also occupied by the fetishes and tries to kill them. And you are relatively safe, and you can run close and hunt and do your and do your things. So fetishes save you from a lot of trouble, absolutely, and they uh, serve as meat shields, and uh, they are really good uh, for keeping you healthy and safe. So this is why I use it, and I came to a conclusion that it's one of the best options to survive the Reef Guardians and there's nasty elite packs on the high tiers of Great Reefs. But if you prefer more DPS, that Hawking Girl is a great option as well. It releases an extra Hound and it immediately does 120% damage of the two-piece Jade set. It's a huge DPS boost for single target damage as well when you, when you spam a Hound on a single mob you immediately do all the damage with the Hound. This is really good DPS boost. I used it a lot also in the Great Rift. But, uh, but I realized that surviving is, uh, is the big deal, is the big deal here. Another option here is to use Wild Hive instead of Henry's Acquisition here. Also a good option if you don't have Henry's and you're running uh, slower tiers especially like 50s or 60s or maybe 70s where damage reduction is not so over important. You can use Vile Hive here for more local swarm damage 
it's not a huge DPS boost in my opinion, uh, but a huge survival drop and a huge toughness drop for you. So only use it on lower tiers, absolutely. Uh, for hardcore, it's absolutely possible to use Jade in hardcore, but it's really sketch. I don't suggest using Jade, Jade for hardcore. Uh, for hardcore, you should switch uh, conventional elements to Unity and have Unity on your follower as well instead of uh, Weird Word or something like that, instead of the Oculus Ring maybe. So two Unities and your toughness boosts greatly, but still the damage set doesn't, uh, the Jade set uh, does not have building damage reduction, so it might not help you on the hardcore. Uh, Jade is kind of really fragile without the Soul Harvest text. It kind of reminds me of Zuni without the fetishes. fetishes. It's like that, unfortunately. Even when you move with Endless Walk, it's still just have no built in damage reduction, like for example the Hell Tooth that instantly give you damage reduction. So, but yeah, the, I did, uh, I did uh, run uh, where the Unity up to 70 or even 80 can be done with Unity without huge, uh, with Unity without any huge problem. But this setup where the Henry's with convention elements, elements and something like this, something like this, this is the way to go guys. Diamond and Helm for more CDR. Try as much CDR as possible, but don't forget that vitality is critically important for the Jade build because we run on really low toughness. So, this is it, guys. I think I explained pretty much everything for how this build works. I would also say that this build works for both current life. Uh, non season or season or doesn't matter what it's good for current patch 2.4.1 and it's if the ring will be untouched untouched by the developers it will also be good in the next patch when it hits life it's currently good on PTR so this is how it works thanks for watching subscribe to my videos this I'm extremely sorry for this really really long in-depth video guide for the J but I wanted to explain everything and all options why people use this or that or something like uh, something like this so thanks for watching guys subscribe to my videos and expect more videos soon thank you very much